uh, no, series are not difficult, but it's one of those things that notation may kind of throw you for a loop. So let me know if I start talking about something and it's not making sense. But then what a series is, is it's a sum of an arithmetic or geometric sequence. All right, so what we've been dealing with, we're going to add all those terms together. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is something called summation notation. And it indicates to you to find the sum of the terms of the sequence, and this is how it shows up. There's this really weird E looking thing, that's the Greek letter sigma. Okay, so that's sigma. Anytime you see a sigma in math, it denotes a sum. Anytime you see a sigma in math, it denotes a sum. So you start at the bottom. So this means the sum of the terms, A sub K, so those are the terms of your sequence, starting at one, to some other number in, okay, so the first through the tenth terms, or it could technically start at the fourth term, this could be A equals four, um, so that would be starting at the fourth term to a certain number of terms. So what it's telling you to do is to sum up from the bottom to the top that many terms in your sequence, okay, um, and K is what we call the index of summation, it doesn't really matter, but it has an A. Okay, so um, let's start with the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. Okay, it must be finite because let's think about this. If it's an infinite sequence and it's arithmetic, if it's arithmetic, we're adding or subtracting the same thing at a time. So if we don't indicate a start and an end, then we're just going to keep adding terms and it's never going to end. Right? So it has to be a finite set of numbers. So it has to be 1 through 10 or 5 through 100. It's got to be a set number. Okay? Uh, and to find that sum, notice this is kind of how this uh, notation right here breaks down. Okay? So you start with A equals 1. So A sub 1, and then we count up by 1s until we get to this top number up here. In this case, it's N. So we stop with the N. Term. Obviously, when we do a problem, that would be a specific number. But we're just adding up all those terms. Now, technically, you can do that in your calculator, okay? But what if you have to add up 100 terms? Okay? You don't want to just add up 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 100, up to the 100th term. Here is a formula for it. Now, this capital S also denotes the sum. So this would be the sum of the n number of terms, how many number of terms we have, is equal to the number of terms times your first term plus your last term <laughs> divided by two. That will give you the sum. Now you could also uh, you could also look at it like this. You can divide how many terms you have by two. That may actually um, that's probably a better idea so that you don't have a parentheses issue. Let me see exactly how they put it on the <coughs> formula sheets. Yeah, this is how they write it on the formula sheet on the exam. And that's actually a good idea. You divide the number of terms by two, and you multiply it by the first term plus the last term. Um, the problem with this is a lot of people want multiple parentheses around the numerator. They just type in in parentheses a, a sub 1 plus a sub n divided by 2. <coughs> Well, if you do that without parentheses on the numerator, it's just going to divide the a sub n by 2 instead of that sum of those two terms. So when you do it this way, it kind of ruins that issue. Okay? So it's probably better to actually follow this one. Um, and there is an alternate form of this equation. They don't put it on the final exam, uh, but this is if you don't know the final term of the sequence, you know how many they're supposed to be, but you don't know the final term, this is one way uh, to also find the sum. All it's doing is incorporating the calculation of that final term into this formula. That's the only difference. It's just building in the calculation. Um, so like I said, they don't put it on the formula sheet because technically you can figure out the last term. If you know these pieces, you can figure out the last term. Which is really the key to the equation. Alright, so let's look at a problem. This is actually an application problem. 
They tell us that a corner section of a stadium has eight seats along the front row. Each successive row has two more seats than the row preceding it. If the top row has 24 seats, how many seats are in the entire section? So let's look at this. Uh, if we are going to use our formula, and I'm just going to write it in general terms, uh, n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. So let's see what we know. We know that the front row has 8 seats. That's our a sub 1 because we're trying to total up the number of seats. We know that the top row has 24 seats. That's our last term. The problem is we don't know how many rows there are. Okay, we do not know how many rows there are. So we can figure that out, right? Let's go to our explicit formula. Okay, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d because we know enough information for this. Okay, so let's say... Uh, a sub n, <clears throat> we know is 24. That's our last row. We know our first row, a sub 1 is 8. We don't know what n is. We know what d is. What's d? 2. We're adding 2 rows, or 2 seats to every row, so that's our d. So then we can solve this. So we've got 16 is equal to 2n minus 2. So 18 is equal to 2n. 9 is our n. So we are finding the sum of nine of these rows. So then we can plug nine into our summation formula. So we've got the sum of the first nine rows. Uh, eight plus 24 is 32. Divided by two is 16 times nine is, I'm going to use my calculator, nine times 16. 144. Okay, so the deal with these series questions is it may not just be a case of plugging in the numbers. You may have to go back to your sequence formulas to figure out one of those numbers, whether it be how many terms you're talking about, or you may have to figure out what the last term is. They may say, here's your first term. You want to find the, first, the sum of the first 50, and your common difference is 5. Well, you got to know the last term. you got to know the 50th term. So you have to go back to your explicit formula to figure out that 50th term. Or you may have to go to the explicit formula to figure out how many terms you've got. Um, so... Just keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, let's talk about a finite geometric sequence. Uh, same deal, okay? Summation notation means the same thing. Here's the formula. They give it to you, okay? You do not have to memorize it. Notice on this one, though, we don't have to know the final term. All we need to know is the first term, our common ratio, and how many terms we have. So the formula is a little bit different because geometric sequences behave a little differently. Um, but again, you just need to know how to plug all these numbers in. So let's say they give us the sequence. 4, negative 4 thirds, 4 ninths, negative 4 over 27, dot, 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 4 times negative 1 third to the 10th. So let's see here. Let's write down our formula, so we know what we're looking for, s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth over 1 minus r. Okay. So we're looking for the sum. I don't know n just yet. I think I can figure it out, but I'm going to hold off. What's a sub 1? 4. Okay, that's our first term. 1 minus, what's our common ratio? Negative 1 third. Negative 1 third is our common ratio. Every single time we're multiplying these by negative 1 third. This last term here is kind of a dead giveaway for that. This kind of looks like the explicit formula. 
um, the first term times common ratio raised to a power. So that's a little bit of the giveaway there. Um, over 1 minus the common ratio. Okay, so the only thing we've got to figure out here is n. n is the number of terms. Now, we're missing some right here. There's that dot, 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 so we can't just count these and say, oh, there are five terms. Well, not really. Okay, so let's look at our explicit formula. That says it should be a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That's a sub 1. That's r. So this exponent right here is n minus 1. So how many terms are we dealing with? 11. We're dealing with 11 terms because the exponent is 10. So n minus 1 equals 10. n is 11. Okay, now, where the majority of people mess up on these is in typing it into their calculator. So what I would do <coughs> is I would type this part in first, okay, that top parentheses there. Um, so 1 minus, make sure you put negative 1 third in parentheses. Anytime you raise any number other than a positive whole number to a power, you need to put it in parentheses. Okay, anytime you raise any number other than a positive whole number, put it in parentheses. So that's that piece. It's being multiplied by 4, and then it's being divided by 1 minus negative 1 third. You got to make sure you get the 1 minus negative 1 third in parentheses. Okay, make sure you put parentheses around that. And so the sum of these 11 terms is 3. Looks kind of weird, right? Because the first term is 4. But if you think about it, some of these terms are negative. So when you're adding them together, they're going to take away from the sum. Not a ton because they're smaller numbers, but they are negative. So they are somewhat taking away from uh, that sum. So a sum for a geometric sequence, well, and for an arithmetic sequence for that matter, can be smaller than your first term. It just depends on the on the uh, setup of the sequence. Okay. Questions so far? No. Okay. Okay. Now, what if they give us the formula? What if they give us the formula? They're not giving us a set number of terms, but they're giving us the formula. Yes, sir. All right, so uh, that first one, what type of sequence is that? Is it arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. arithmetic. Okay, it's arithmetic. You've got to recognize that because you don't know which formula to use if you don't identify it as arithmetic or geometric. So our arithmetic formula, we need to know the number of terms. Well, they told us that. First 25. we got to know the first one, and we got to know the last one. Okay, well, that's easy enough, right, because we have the formula. So all we need to do is plug in 1 to figure out the first term. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Plug in 25 to find the last one. 2 times 25 is 50, minus 1 is 49. And then we just plug the, uh, that and 25 into our formula. And we are good to go. 1 plus 49 is 50, divided by 2 is 25. 25 squared, or 25 times 25, is 625. Alrighty. Okay, there should be a little dot in between the negative 1 and the 2 on your paper. I don't know that there is, but maybe there is. I don't know. Um, there should be a little dot right there. Yeah, it got moved. Yeah, it got moved. Yeah. Should be a dot between the negative 1 and the 2. That is not negative 12 to the n minus 1. It's negative 1 times 2 to the n minus 1. So what kind of sequence is this? Geometric. So its summation formula, we need to know the first term. We've got to know the common ratio. We've got to know the number of terms. Okay. 
So, looking at the formula, do we know the first term? Yes.